Uh, this week was actually the 25th anniversary of the premiere of the X-Men animated series on Fox Kids. The first episode, Night of the Sentinels, aired on uh, on Fox at like on like Halloween, which seems like a really bad time to put up a cartoon for kids because they're all out dressed up as costumes. Right. Um, this was you grew up with this, right? Oh God, I love yeah. this show. This was the original X-Men cartoon. This is uh, I knew it was like cool when I was a kid. I hadn't seen anything like it, but I also was like you know I hadn't been around. I was like six or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of incredible look back at it. The Hollywood Reporter put up this amazing article where they tracked down all of the cast and producers and crew and they kind of interviewed them and just got their different sides of the story of how this came together. I had no idea this show was as much of a train wreck to get made as it was. Um, Basically, there was this one uh, producer at at Fox Kids who had piloted a show called, uh, what is it? It's called The Pride of the X-Men, which, and it's floating around out there. It's really weird because I always thought this was the very first X-Men cartoon, but there was another one which was made in the late 80s and it had totally different X-Men designs. They were all based on kind of the earlier character designs, not like the 90s Jim Lee stuff. Um, but it like kind of sucked. Like it had much more of that like this G.I. One? Joe, real American hero vibe to it. Yeah. Interesting, um, I remember Dazzler that. was part of it. Uh, yeah. The kind of young X-Men role was was filled by, by Kitty Pryde. Uh, <laughs> my favorite thing though is for no reason discernibly, uh, Wolverine has an Australian accent. Oh, I don't know. Really know how they were just like that works. That that makes sense. Sure. It's like, dude, he's like the whole Canadian thing is a you know big part of that. Um, I did like the fact that uh, there's the guys credits from YouTube. Um, I did like the fact that Dazzler and Nightcrawler were in there. They were some of my favorite characters. Um, but the the '90s X Men show. Uh, what's nuts about that is apparently one of the things that they had a hard time with doing with the show. It was serialized. Right. Uh, if you look at how those episodes are broken down, like I've I've done the thing where I'm like, oh, it's streaming. I'm gonna watch like one episode. And I'm like, oh, each season is an entire cohesive story. Yeah, arc. there were weird, there were weird story arcs in it that carried over. And when you were a kid, you basically had to watch every week because it became like mm-hmm. water cooler talk with your friends at exactly. school. Exactly. Um, like the whole uh, Jean Grey Cyclops relationship Dude, had, was... had ups and downs, like an actual relationship, or so I thought. I was young; I hadn't had an actual relationship then. But yeah. like, you had to actually tune in every week to sort of keep along. And if you didn't, you'd come to school and you'd have to cover your ears and be like spoilers, which we didn't have to do with like Rescue Rangers. No. You know? um, what's really nuts is yeah, uh, sick, man. I love the tutti fruity, my favorite. Uh, the voice actors all were based out of Canada, which I think was some like weird contractual thing that was it was cheaper or whatever. Um, but this is all like kind of a precursor to, I, I don't know, they couldn't do anything digitally, so they'd have to record stuff on cassettes and like mail it back to LA where they're making the show. Uh, Haim Saban, who made Power Rangers, was a big part of producing this. It was just this weird kind of like cobbled together, jerry-rigged approach to making a cartoon, and the fact that it was serialized was a huge pain in the ass for them because if an episode wasn't finished, and oh, by the way, the episodes were all made in Korea, so they had to ship that stuff back and forth, right. which explains why occasionally there are shots where Wolverine just doesn't have pants on, like they forgot to paint his legs. Oh they put yeah, him in like yeah. a green, uh, like a blue speedo, and that's it. Or he forgot um, to put on his pants. Yeah, that does happen here and there. Um, but basically, it was like you know they're recording the voices in Canada, they're, they're making the cartoon in, in in Korea, and then in LA they're putting it together, and they're like, oh, what happens next week? Oh, that episode's not done yet. Ooh, so they pretty much had to have every season really on track before they were doing stuff. Wow. And that's like thinking back, I hadn't seen a cartoon that was like that. Occasionally, things would have like. Uh, you know, like two-parter episodes or three-parters, but you didn't really get these ongoing kind of like long serial arcs like you see in something like like an anime. Sure. Um, what's interesting too is that this also helped kind of establish, uh, it established the X-Men as a brand entirely, but it also helped establish like Fox Kids. Uh, they'd had Batman the Animated Series, which was their uh, weeknight show, uh, and that show wasn't as serialized, so they could they could kind of jump around with episodes. Yeah, they but did every, occasional two-parters yeah. on that show, but, but nothing like that. Every Saturday it was X Men. Yeah, um, and it's it's kind of nuts. Also, like Marvel wasn't doing so hot when this came out. Like this was kind of like a this was kind of a shot in the dark for them. Uh, the last success they'd had up before this was the '80s uh, Incredible Hulk cartoon or mm-hmm. uh, live action show. Uh, so like this kind of like weird roll of the dice that Fox Kids took established X Men as a as a brand helped elevate like Marvel and it got a ton of kids uh, like interested in comics. Uh, a lot of what I knew going into X Men uh, just introduced the characters and the in the kind of universe and the lore was from the cartoon because it does a really really good job of actually adapting some of the comic arcs. I think so um, specifically the reason there were so many butts in seats for the Brian Singer movies was because we grew up with this exactly, sort of exactly yeah this kind of soft resurgence of X Men. Um, 
we talk about this a lot about the like the weird dark days of comic book fandom. But when I was a kid and I watched this every Saturday, I was huge into it. Me and my brother would stand up on the couch and just like sing along to the theme song, even though it didn't have lyrics. He'd be like, da 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 da, scare everyone. And my mom would be like, what's going on in the other room? Are you guys okay? You'd go to comic book conventions that were basically like there'd be an arcade in town or like something like that, and they'd build out the top floor. And on weekends after cartoons ended, you would ask your mom for a couple bucks. You'd get in a car and you'd go to this thing that was basically just like people selling. Use comics. There were guys who had Wizards, Wizard Magazine, which had all the price guides for everything in it. God. And you'd flip them open, and you'd get the old, um, the old '90s X-Men action figure toys. And you'd find weird ones, and they all had like weird, you know, protracting swords and stuff like that from their hands. Uh, it felt like old Star Wars collecting in a lot of ways. But that was kind of it. And then you got Marvel cards and little things like that. But there wasn't really any sort of like we didn't all come together in unison to watch the movies together. That wasn't until the 2000s with the Brian Singer X-Men movies when Fox got the license. So it felt really weird because you'd come into school and you'd see a kid with like a like a shirt with like Magneto on it and mm-hmm. you'd be like, I know who that is. So Everyone Heathen, else is like, who's that? <laughs> Heathen Deluxe in our YouTube chat says, what are you talking about? Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man was doing amazing at Marvel. I was there in 1992. Marvel was at a height, a height of its powers. Yeah, in, in comic form. In comic but form, But also yeah. Todd McFarlane uh, Spider-Man apparently wasn't doing hot enough because 1991 is also when Todd McFarlane went and founded Image Comics because he wasn't really having a great time. Right. Uh, which led to the Marvel. Spawn movie, which is a sort of a blight yeah. on comic book movies in history. Yeah. The X-Men animated series was very cool and so was Batman the animated series. We made a video talking about that as well. And if you want to know something really cool, check out this list of actors who were almost in the X-Men movies.